and the previous major moves in the gold market because that's not the way a top in gold occurs. It will never be a, it will never be an easy double top. It will be a top brought up into violence, but not but not an overvaluation that will be created uh, in the most spectacular of manners. Not not in in uh, a classical uh, technical uh, formation. So the future of of the uh, of the explorer gold producer uh, uh, gold producer is simply what do they have? What can they extract? How much money can they make by doing it? It's a pretty simple equation, and uh, that will be the final determinant of the value. Because if it isn't bought by the general market, it's clearly going to be bought by the majors who need to get the additional resources uh, for their production. So uh, the price of gold shares at the present time uh, leaves, uh, leaves many well below the intrinsic value to a producer, uh, and therefore selling at, at, at not only a significant uh, uh, discount to the price of gold, but also a discount to simple logic. You know, Jim, I'd like to ask you here, you mentioned something really interesting, talking about the ETFs. In relation to this MF global collapse, is this the first of potentially the crumbling of gigantic large pieces of the financial system, which could potentially render those vehicles worthless to a certain extent? Well, there's... The there, there, the, if you were to go inside the maze of MF right now, what you find out is there's a terrific battle taking place uh, in uh, that is a battle between the derivative positions and the client positions. Uh, under Bush, uh, a law was passed that would uh, prevent um, the bankruptcy court from splitting the derivative, meaning derivatives are various various uh, contracts bound to each other. So on one side you have a debit, the other side you have a credit, and the size of the, uh, and, and others might be even, uh, the difference of, uh, uh, the difference of profit and loss would be the debit or credit, and if you were to split the two, you'd have possibly a, a huge credit and a modest debit, or, or all kinds of machinations of that, which would be well beyond the value of the derivative itself. Notional value would become real value if you split the derivative. Uh, now, if uh, MF uh, is basic clients, both security and commodity, are not are left hanging in the sense that they they not only have lost their positions, but they've also lost any any value they had in their account, meaning they don't have anything. It will come about only because the uh, the court. Uh, uh, the adjudication of the bankruptcy uh, favored the derivative over the client position. Uh, that has to have that that has to have a, a, an extremely serious effect on confidence. Uh, the confidence, in the sense of of, uh, of uh, your statement, actually meaning anything of value, uh, the, especially those who are trading in commodities. Uh, the uh, uh, that the if in fact the, the clients are paid back, then they, then the whole derivative question is brought into into focus, making MF a potential new Lehman Brothers. So the situation sitting there is is really a syst systemic problem. It's the system. The, it, it's the mechanism. How the mechanism works. And when problems like that occur, where you you should be more concerned over whether or not your statement even means anything, uh, the attractiveness of of assets without liabilities attached to them. Held physically uh, or stored proper, uh, uh, stored personally uh, by the investor becomes very attractive. So the MF situation is is a, a piece of dynamite sitting under the gold price. Jim, I'd also like to ask you here. In a recent interview, you used the phrase "what we lose, others gain" in terms of irresponsibility in the Western financial markets. And what's going on here? Does it seem like this business is simply going to? move east and the Asian markets will then begin becoming the leaders, financial centers of the world? Well, historically and even in a broader sense economically, uh, strength has always has always followed, uh, the markets and uh, interests have always followed economic strength. And clearly uh, after uh, Volcker basically won it all for the West, uh, the uh, uh, various chairmen that took his position thereafter have been distributing it back to the east. 
So the uh, economic stability of the East, uh, the economic potential consumer base uh, uh, of the East is so much greater than the West that there's a huge socio-political change taking place, which is going to result in uh, in uh, the next economic recovery not favoring the West. And so I'd like to ask you now about gold. Uh, you've spoken pretty regularly about the angels, a formula to which is derived from Jesse Livermore's published formula in the Wall Street Journal in 1923, I believe it was. And I'm wondering, uh, could you explain that a little bit for our listeners, and uh, what do you see coming up here shortly for gold? Well, 1764 is, is, is one of the angels, one of the squares of the numbers. And uh, 1764 has certainly been a fulcrum point for this, this recent market as, as recently as this morning at uh, 762.50, the high. Uh, the... Uh, that system works very well uh, until you get into markets like we're going to get into now. In other words, the, the angels were, were dead on, almost to the dollar, uh, all the way up. But then as the markets become more violent, they become less uh, accurate, but more like fulcrum points. Uh, I would... Uh, I, I would... Um, I would not put as much uh, faith in them giving you absolute highs or lows uh, that they did from 248 to 1650 as they will from the present level to what Alf Fields is looking for, and I think correctly, 4,500. And what are your thoughts, Jim, on silver here? Well, I'm not, I don't consider myself an expert in silver, but, but poor man's gold it is. Easier, easier, in fact, to manipulate than gold is. Uh, clearly, gold is not going to make a new high that that uh, and silver failed to accomplish the same. One last question I have for you here is: if we were to meet again in five years, possibly ten years after all this is hopefully said and done in terms of the Western financial system, how do you envision the world at times here uh, for the West? Well, historically, every time there's been a condition like this, the road out has been paved by the assumption of a currency based on a commodity. Uh, in uh, Weimar, it was the Rentenmark. The Rentenmark was based on, on uh, uh, government-owned real estate, except the government didn't own that much real estate. Uh, I would suggest that if we were to meet, though, let's make it, uh, let's not go too far out. How about uh, 20, 2016? We'd probably be looking at a reserve currency that was a virtual currency that you and I couldn't buy. Uh, that was a uh, that was modeled from uh, every major trading currency, which means a huge average, which did nothing else but slow down the ups and slow down the downs. To which gold would have a relationship, but not a but not a direct attachment and not convertibility. The relationship would be developed from the value of gold held at the time of the the, the, uh, uh, the scheme is uh, adopted. Uh, to an, a global M3 and each each country's contribution to that. Uh, the, no treasury would have to change, it would have to buy or sell any gold because I'm sure Goldman Sachs would figure out derivatives that could be traded, uh, that would, that, whereby the market would speculate on the changes of this global M3 per each nation and change the price of gold accordingly. Uh, I think that in times of extreme need, uh, non-solutions can be deducted as solution. That's a form of one non-solution that could be adopted as a solution, and that in all probability we'll be talking about in 2016. All right, well, Jim Sinclair, I want to thank you so much for sharing your comments here for uh, our listeners that want to reach out and follow your work. What can they go to do so? Well, they can always, go to the, they can always uh, see what we're doing on, on the website, or you can ask me back on days when gold is wild. All right, well, Jim Sinclair, CEO of Tanzania and Realty Exploration, thank you so much for sharing your comments. It's my pleasure. Thank